Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and an in-depth look into the mock I created for the Marine Rescue Diorama video I released just recently. If you haven't had a chance to see that video yet, I've linked it in the description below and I strongly suggest you take a look. It's a very short promotional style video designed to show off the latest line of super articulated, incredibly detailed UNSC Marines that Mega Constructs have created for their current Halo Infinite line. Coming back to this video, I'm going to take you on a walk around the mock, showing you some of the details that weren't featured in the Marine Rescue video. I'll also let you know what some of my inspirations were for this mock and show you some of the building techniques and parts that I use to create this very industrial look. First up, I want to discuss where the inspiration came from for this build and how it all got started. It came from me watching a, another YouTube channel, Eric's Hobby Workshop. I do watch quite a lot of his videos. If you're not familiar with this channel, I've linked it in the description below for you guys to take a look at. It's well worth a look. He creates some incredibly detailed environments. He's not a Megablocks YouTuber. He's more of a model maker, but he's well worth a look all the same. So I watched one of his videos titled 40K Terrain Pipelines and Conduits. Now, this in itself is a very impressive video to watch, but as as soon as I saw that, I just felt the overwhelming urge to try and create something similar out of mega constructs. So that's where the inspiration came from. But moving back to the mock, you can see it's clearly evolved on from that inspiration. The original finished mock had no foliage or green on it. It was just the industrial site. And unfortunately, once it was finished, it, as detailed as it was, it looked very bland and very un-Halo, even if I put the figures on it. So I decided I needed to do something else before I could release a video of the mock. The first thing I tried was putting a few of the vehicles in. I put the mongoose next to it and also the warthog. But again, they just look completely out of place. So that was when I came up with the idea to try and create some kind of EVA's last stand scene just in front of it, which I used the mongoose for. The mongoose just size-wise fitted better into this mock. So then I started playing around with a few green plates and so on, got some of the shrubbery from the Ultimate Assault on High Ground mock, and once I got started, I just could not stop. I very quickly realized that it added a huge amount of life to the mock, and it also made it feel more Halo. So when I started putting figures in, they just looked at home. It was then that I came up with the idea for the story that this was a section of a UNSC frigate or some giant spaceship that's crashed down on Zeta Halo like we saw in the game trailer. And this section may have crashed down a long time ago and then the jungle just started to reclaim it over the years. And that's where I came up with that idea that these UNSC troops are just taking refuge in this old wreckage from a UNSC spaceship. So that covers the inspiration and the story behind the build. So now let's take a closer look at some of the details and how I managed to create some of these details. We'll start off with the main ducting. I wanted to create some kind of oversized pipework that would suggest it carries some sort of coolant or liquid. So I had a whole tray of these booster sections from the countdown sets I've collected over the years. Now, these sections, I've never been able to think of a use for them. But when I was going through my parts drawers, I instantly realized they're perfect for creating pipework with. So thankfully, I had enough of those to connect them all together. Now, unfortunately, you don't get bends with these sections. They only do straight sections. So to get around that, I created these boxes and then you can send them off in almost any angle that you want to. The way I made this work was simple. As you can see, if you just pop one of these tubes off of the catwalk here, it's just a case of putting a two by two plate down and then surrounding it with tiles. And then you build up from there using two by two blocks and they eventually connect in to the end of one of these tubes. And then you can just stack them as far as you want to. When it comes for doing the horizontal pipes, I simply used one of these angle brackets hanging out of one of the boxes that I built to change direction. And then you can send it off in any direction. And you do need a way of reversing it at the other end, which is a bit more tricky, but you just use whatever pieces you've got available to reverse the connection on the other end. Once I dealt with the main ducting, I then moved on to the smaller gauge pipework just to add a little bit more detail. I managed to create these by utilizing all the tubular sections that come in the Rhino sets that I've collected over the years. 
All of these tubular sections come from the rear stabilizers as well as the main cannon. If you just connect these end on end on end, you can just create pipework, very effective looking pipework as well. And then you simply use the one by one blocks with the hole in the end that you would use to connect something to, to connect them into those box sections that the main ducting also goes into. Once I'd settled on how all the main pipework and ducting was going to go, I then went about trying to make the boxes that the pipework goes in and out of a little bit more realistic. So I used steering wheels everywhere to act as shutoff valves for whatever fluid was going in and out of these box junctions. So I also put levers and lights and pretty much anything that I could add in there just to add a little bit more realism to the functionality of this mock. This section in the back corner was actually designed to show fluid levels and pressures. It wasn't shown in the video, but I am still particularly pleased with it. The silver drums in the back are actually rhino wheels, and they also make very good pieces for creating long lengths of ducting out of. I used a couple of thruster nozzles off the back of the broadsword to create these ventilation outlets underneath the catwalk. And then I also used these unusually shaped silver pieces from the sabre that comes with the countdown set to create these very industrial looking lighting pendants. It's a good time to mention that whenever I'm creating mocks, I'm always looking for new ways to use unusual pieces, especially like those sabre pieces, which are quite challenging to use in many builds. So I'm particularly pleased with how well those lighting pendants came out. They look like they're made for that purpose. Moving on to the upper levels of the mock, there's not a huge amount going on past the foliage and a couple of fusion coils, although I did use a number of these pieces that come on the tips of the wings of the short sword all together to create this giant radiator cooling assembly on the top of the catwalk. The only other thing on the upper level are these two orange cylinders which come from the sabre as well. These were designed to depict some kind of chemical storage tanks. So the only thing left I'd like to talk about is the greenery, all the shrubbery, which trust me guys is what makes this mock what it is. It needed that greenery. But before we move on to that, if you're new to the channel and you're enjoying the video, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Otherwise just hit the like button, it's all appreciated. Okay, so back to this greenery. Like I say, this mock was nothing without it. Now I know it's always in short supply greenery from Mega Constructs. It doesn't come in a huge amount of sets. But it's not just about the little tree or palm pieces. The original green mottled colour makes excellent jungle flooring. It's just so good. I'm not a big fan of using it to build mocks or anything from in terms of vehicles because they've just got much better brick choice with their more modern colours. But from when it comes to creating grounds or jungle areas, this is definitely my first colour of choice. And the good thing is I've got absolutely heaps of it. So although, yes, those little palms are very handy, when you look what I've done along the catwalk here by using some of these bonnet sections from Warthogs, you can create this drooping foliage off of the top of the catwalk, which from a fair distance has a very good effect. I've also done something similar by making it droop down from out the top of this pipework section here. And all these little details just add a huge amount of value to the mock. In the corner of the stairs here, you can see I've used corner slope pieces. They just lend themselves so well to either built up ground covered in moss or just general jungle floor. And I think that just about covers everything I wanted to discuss about this mock. So I hope you did enjoy it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't seen the promotional trailer yet, then I thoroughly recommend you go and watch that once this one's finished. And now it's time for me to start building something else. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.